Pentecost Sunday, and our worship this morning is Morning Prayer Rite 2 from the Book of Common Prayer. If you don't have the book at home, that's okay. You can just listen along and join in the prayers as you know them. Our opening sentence comes from the Book of Acts. Jesus said, You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem, and in Judea, and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Our confession is on page 79. Dearly beloved, we have come together in the presence of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, to set forth his praise, to hear his holy word, and to ask, for ourselves and on behalf of others, those things that are necessary for our life and our salvation. And so that we may prepare ourselves in heart and mind to worship him, let us kneel in silence and with penitent and obedient hearts confess our sins that we may obtain forgiveness by his infinite goodness and mercy.
Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you in our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Lord, open our lips, and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Hallelujah. There move the ships, and there is that Leviathan, which you have made for the sport of it. All of them look to you to give them their food in due season. You give it to them, they gather it. You open your hand, and they are filled with good things. You hide your face, and they are terrified. You take away their breath, and they die and return to their dust. You send forth your spirit, and they are created. And so you renew the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in all his works. He looks at the earth, and it trembles. He touches the mountains, and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will praise my God while I have my being. May these words of mine please him. I will rejoice in the Lord. Bless the Lord, O my soul. 
Hallelujah. Our first reading is from the book of Acts, second chapter, beginning at the first verse. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind. And it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own language, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. People of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire, and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness, and the moon to blood, before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Here ends the reading.
Our second reading comes from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, 12th chapter, beginning at the third verse. No one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Now, there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it's the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, and to another the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit. To another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by the one Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another the discernment of spirits, to another various kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. All these are activated by one and the same Spirit, who allots to each one individually, just as the Spirit chooses. But just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in one spirit we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of one spirit. Here ends the reading. Thanks Let us be to God. God. thirsty come to me and let the one who believes in me drink as the scripture has said out of the believers heart shall flow rivers of living water now he said this about the spirit which believers in him were to receive for as yet there was no spirit because Jesus was not yet glorified here ends the reading let us join in the Apostles' Creed 
found on page 96 in the Book of Common Prayer. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, he was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he arose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our suffrages this morning are form B, found on page 98 in the Book of Common Prayer. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them now and always. Day by day we bless you. We praise your name forever. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Have mercy on us, Lord. Have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy. For we put our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope. And we shall, we shall never hope in vain. vain. Our collect appointed for today. Almighty God, on this day you open the way of eternal life to every race and nation by the promised gift of your Holy Spirit. Shed abroad this gift throughout the world by the preaching of the gospel, that it may reach to the ends of the earth through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A colic for Sundays. O oh God, you make us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord. Give us this day such blessing through our worship of you, that the week to come may be spent in your favor, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. A call for the renewal of life. O oh God, the King Eternal, whose light divides the night from the day and turns the shadow of death into the morning. Drive far from us all wrong desires, incline our hearts to keep your law, and guide our feet into the way of peace, that having done your will with cheerfulness during the day, we may, when night comes, rejoice to give you thanks through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. A call it for peace. O oh God, the author of peace and lover of concord, to know you is eternal life, and to serve you is perfect freedom. Defend us, your humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in your defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries. Through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
a collect for knowledge of God's creation. Almighty and everlasting God, you made the universe with all its marvelous order, its atoms, worlds, and galaxies, and the infinite complexity of living creatures. Grant that, as we probe the mysteries of your creation, we may come to know you more truly and more surely fulfill our role in your eternal purpose. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And a call out for the future of the human race. O oh God, our Heavenly Father, you have blessed us and given us dominion over all the earth. Increase our reverence before the mystery of life and give us new insight into your purposes for the human race and new wisdom and determination in making provision for its future in accordance with your will. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. O God, you have made of one blood all the peoples of the earth and sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you, bring the nations into your fold, pour out your spirit upon all flesh, and hasten the coming of your kingdom. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. On our prayer list this week, 
We pray for Chris and Doreen Hutchins, Tony Montecalvo, Howard Dearden, Thomas, Dot Johnson, Kelly Tinch Hansen, Jack and Family, Ralph Carey, Ellen Weinhold, Gertrude Carey, Blanche Campbell, Diane Cavanaugh and Kimberly, Sean Broder, and Bill and Nancy Burkheiser. These, this time I ask you to add your own intentions either silently or loud. pray especially this week for all those who are suffering from the COVID-19 pandemic and for the people who are caring for them. In our diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for the parishes of the Merrimack Valley Deanery, St. Andrew's Church, Methuen, St. Paul's Church, Newburyport, St. Paul's Church, North Andover, the Merrimack Valley Project, and all deacons. In our Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the Anglican Church of Melanesia, the Most Reverend Leonard Dewea, Archbishop of the Anglican Church of Melanesia and Bishop of Temotu. We also pray for our partners in clean water, the parish of St. John's in Humbi, Tanzania. In our local cycle of prayer, we pray for the Church of Jesus Christ of the Latter-day Saints in Methuen. The altar is prepared today in loving memory of Margaret, Gladys, and Bob Acom given by Beverly and Dane Kimball, and also prepared for Lloyd Campbell, Catherine Ann Wilson, Walter H. Wilson, Hazel Hills, Beth Roberts, Linda Cavanaugh Kennedy, Len Brown, Eva S. Madden, Virginia P. Madden, Joe Madden, Warren and Dorothy Archambault, Al Harvey, Frank Worthy Sr. and Robert Gensel. We also remember in our prayers this week all who have died for, from, because of the COVID-19 pandemic and for their families and friends who are grieving the loss. At this time I'd like to offer some comments on our readings this morning. Being Pentecost, of course, we celebrate that time almost 2,000 years ago when the Holy Spirit came upon Jesus' disciples and inspired them to speak in many different languages so that they could go out as evangelists and bring the good news to all corners of the then known world. And as Jesus said, be a source of living water. But today, I would actually like to focus a little bit more on ministries that you have. I think it's true that many times lay people don't think of all of the good and constructive and helpful things that they do as ministries. A lot of times we think of ministries as being things that occur in churches but, and are done by people who are specially equipped and authorized to do those things in churches. And it's hard to blame ourselves for thinking that way because in Paul's letter this morning to the Corinthians, some of the ministries he talks about that are inspired by the gifts of the Spirit sound like things that would happen in communities of faith. Things like the utterance of wisdom in the name of the Spirit, interpreting knowledge in the name of the Spirit, faith, uh, gifts of miracles and prophecy, 
and discernment of spirits and speaking in tongues and interpretation of tongues. Those sound like things that uh, might be done by people who are called to things like ordained ministry. And so it's easy for us to imagine when we use the word ministry to think of those people who practice ordained ministry. But each and every one of you has a ministry. And those ministries are the good and constructive and helpful things that you do every day that make people's lives better, whether they are done in your employment or whether they're done in your families or in your neighborhoods or in your communities. Those are ministries because you are equipped to do those things that you are good at. You're good at them because of the Holy Spirit giving you the gifts you need to do all of those wonderful things to help so many people. And Paul mentions that in something we read almost in passing as we get to his long list of rather dramatic ministries that he puts in today's passage. This part of what he writes applies directly to you in all of the good things you do in your life every day. Listen to what he says and think about it in terms of your life, your work, and your activities as ministries. Now there are varieties of gifts but the same spirit. There are varieties of services but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone including you. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. So what gifts might those be? Perhaps being able to repair a car to help somebody out. Perhaps being able to dress a wound to help somebody heal. Perhaps being able to convey knowledge in a clear and understandable way to help someone learn. Perhaps being a good listener to somebody who needs to be heard. Perhaps having the gift of being present with somebody who just needs someone to be near them. Whatever it is that you do in your life that is good and constructive, meaningful and helpful to others, Believe me, you are doing through the inspiration of the Spirit who guides and equips you specially to do so. And you are doing all of that as a ministry in God's name. And believe me, it applies to you what Jesus said in today's Gospel. Out of the believer's heart, out of your heart in doing all of your everyday ministries as guided by the Spirit shall flow rivers of living water. Amen. Our general thanksgiving is found on page 101 in the Book of Common Prayer. And I invite us to say it together. <clears throat> Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace, for the hope of glory, and we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, 
but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service, and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. A prayer of St. Chrysostom. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth, and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. have given to the leadership of each parish a set of guidelines in four phases by which churches will be able to reopen so that people can once again gather and worship. The phases are not so much a timeline as they are um, conditions that have to be met both in the state and locally in terms of public health and also within church buildings in order to be ready and prepared for people to gradually, in phases, come back and gather worship. It would be very helpful to the vestry, the lay leadership of the parish here in St. Andrews, to know whether or not there are people out there among you watching today who might be willing to work with them to help St. Andrews get through those phases. Also, it would be helpful for them to know if people are interested in beginning to come back to gathered worship once we are able to do so. They'd like to be able to get a sense of how many people we need to be able to accommodate over time. Not just people who are regular members of the parish here, but people who might be newly discovering us by watching the live streams, and whom we hope will come by to say hello when time's allowed. If you think you might be able to help the leadership here prepare, and if you think you might be attending St. Andrews once we're able to gather, please help by letting us know by emailing the church at admin at 
ADMIN.org. That is ADMIN at STAndrewsMethuen.org. On behalf of the leadership of the parish, I thank you. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you this day and every day. Amen. Amen. Amen.